Mattis, did you want a word on that? Yeah, I think Jeb, no, I think Jeb is absolutely right that the ways cities are structured determines about 70% of the overall resource demand. So having efficient cities ready for the people who come to the cities is absolutely crucial. And at the same time, it's not an either or. I think in the short run, we need to f very strongly focus on both consumption for, for getting the gains in the short run. Um, we can get sh short term results. And in the short run, we also need to invest very heavily in, um, uh, in demographics and that has very positive benefits on women, but the gains we also will start, we only will start to see decades from now. Well, Matt has referred to the people coming to the cities, and in many cases, particularly in the city in which this broadcast originates, you're talking about immigrants. So I want to get us into some conversation about that now. And to that end, I'm going to read something here from the same gentleman who's a blogger, incidentally, who got this program started with his suggestion that we do this topic. Here's what he asks the question of whether we should shut down the borders. Our Canadian land is like a lifeboat of limited carrying capacity, one which couldn't possibly sustain all of the world's legitimate refugees without making environmental refugees of Canadian people and wildlife. Our moral obligation, he says, is first to existing Canadians, not to the hundreds of millions of immigrants who want to clamber on board our lifeboat and sink it. Here's the question. Do we need to start considering limiting immigration for environmental reasons? You know, How about the, hang on one second. I want to go to Stephen Hazel on that <clears> first. Well, I think, I think, Steve, I think, I think what we have to do in Canada is start thinking about what sort of a population we want to have. There has to, we have to start a policy debate, and, th and this program is the initial start to it. But, but I, would ask, I would ask the question, who's, who's feeling lonely out there? Are you folks in Toronto feeling lonely? What do you mean? Uh, lonely. Are you feeling like you need more people around you? I mean, I grew up in Toronto and I moved to a suburb in 1955 and there was deer grazing in the, in the backyard and that was the outskirts. Now Toronto extends to Lake Simcoe. We destroyed all sorts of lovely habitats by that. Do we, why do we want, I guess what I don't understand is why do we want to have a larger population either in Canada or globally. Well, I don't really point, understand though, Steve, that. Are you, are you other saying than we the, need to cut back on immigration? Well, you know, I think, I think we have to have a debate about it. I think we have to move towards a population that is, that is stable in Canada, whether that's, you know, 40 million or whatever. I don't know. I think we have to really start ser seriously thinking about okay, that. Okay, Bruce wants to engage you well, on that. Well, I would say that the viewer's idea that our first moral obligation is to Canada is, is incorrect. In environmental, uh, we have to start looking at the global community. Uh, there is no such thing as a made in Canada solution to climate change. There's no such uh, you know, thing as a, a made in Canada solution to overpopulation. Immigration isn't, hang on a second Madeline. Uh, immigration is, is more of a, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's you know, a part of the, pro it's not a part of the problem. It is a symptom of the problem of exponential growth. This idea that our economy can grow at 3%, at 2.5, year after year after year after year. And when Canada hits neutral or negative population growth, as, or fertility growth, as we are, we are bringing in immigrants to keep the economy going. Well, guess what? It comes back to consumption again. I'm sorry, we cannot have an economy that doubles in size every 25 years. Madeline's trying to get in. Yeah, I was just going to say we were talking about growth, and I have this article from the Ottawa Citizen Census 2000. Growth doesn't pay for most Canadians, it says. I'm sure you can't see it on the on the. No, hold it up a little higher. Just hold a little higher. There we go. Growth doesn't pay off for most Canadians. Okay. And what it says is that with all the growth in population, I mean, that's the government's argument. We need to keep the population growing for economic growth. Well, guess what? The vast majority, it didn't change at all. The top, the top quintile, the top 20% got... 16% richer and the bottom 20% got 20% poorer. So basically what, it, what has occurred is there's been a transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich. Well, we don't, and sorry, I, don't, uh, uh, I know that came out recently and, and this is not what that program's about, but that, that could also reflect the fact that uh, a lot of new immigrants to this country take the lowest paying jobs and as a result, but you know you know, what? they are represented back, in those figures. Back um, 30 years ago, 
um, immigrants did much better, but now there's a lot more competition. And the, the whole idea is, and there have been various studies uh, uh, by the Canadian government itself, by OECD. But what are you that saying, immigrate Madeline? Have you heard of the, um, the House of Lords, the British House of Lords, just a panel just conducted a study on immigration, and they concluded that there were no net economic benefits. Okay, so what are you saying? We should cut off all immigration no, in this country? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. So I'm what saying are you we saying? Okay, our, our um, website has a, a paper on it that says why Canada needs a population policy. We should assess what our resources are and what an optimum population for Canada should be. There has been no s rational discussion around this issue and it's something that should be in the public domain and people should not be afraid to address the issue of whether we need more or fewer or, or All right, let me, or, let me follow up on that with know, the... I, I agree right, people should not be afraid to address it, but to address it as if that's the way we're going to deal with global environmental problems. I find it to be totally specious. In other words, we I, can't I, on the one hand say that we are citizens of a global community, but we're going to live in our gated community. Do we want to debate this as a gated Je community, or Jeff, are we part of a global Jeff, community Jeff, that's going to figure out, excuse me, I'll just finish, that's going to figure out how to deal with global problems? And I think that we end up, as environmentalists at least, doing a disservice by nationalizing our environmentalism rather than understanding, I think as Mattis has very well presented, that we need to understand what is a developmental pathway for all humans who are on but the But Jeb, you're implying that there's a global government that will, will be concerned about this and the global, I mean the UN can't even get its act together. And to think that there's going to be a global government that will figure out a global population policy is pie in the sky thinking. No. Well that's why I think that... every country to do it itself. No. Ma but and Madeline, that's why I think that, you know, limiting immigration is not a population policy. It's not limiting population in the planet. I'm it looking is at... The, the, the Environmental Commissioner of Ontario has just, in his recent reports, he talked about the impact of four million more people on the Golden uh, Horseshoe area. I mean, it has had a massive impact. And Steve was talking about the, wa the loss of wildlife um, and, and green space from when he was a kid. I, I went to the University of Guelph for my undergraduate degree and I drove from Ottawa to Guelph and between Ajax and Toronto and Toronto and Guelph there was a vast area of green space and farmland and the ag students at Guelph were talking about how all the farmland was being built up but and indeed now 11% of our best agricultural land has been built up.